Hey guys, Rose here with the Cackling Moon. Um, so I tried this video once before, but of course I want to get like something different than this orangey background. <laughs> I really got to just find some photos or like some really pretty pictures, paintings, something to put in the background, um, some shelves maybe because um, I try to have this as my background, but of course like the way the camera is, on my phone um <laughs> it just looks odd and i just it's just better when i film vertical versus horizontal because if i film horizontal to have like more background for you guys to look at then my eyes are like wanting to look at myself and the camera thing the thing actually filming me is over here so it's just awkward it looks weird and <laughs> and I'm too self-conscious to have like all of my b b voluptuousness on video so not re not quite ready for that yet um <laughs> so maybe once I get a better uh tripod 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 um, I will be able to do a little bit more. So sorry, dim, kind of dim lighting. The lighting in my room, the light bulb is not the best. And then I got like some candles. Like I said, I have my candles lit over here. Like I have literally my entire altar set up right now um, because I just pulled some cards and gave hubby a, a smoke cleanse. And <laughs> so I just thought, you know what? Since I'm in my room, why not do a video? Um, so I wanted to answer a question that one of my followers on Instagram asked. They had put in a request if I could film a video talking about connecting with spirit guides. So, um, they, their specific question was, um, how do I connect with spirit guides? What is the process of that? What, what is my experience? What is it like when I'm connecting with them, et cetera, et cetera. So I kind of have an idea of, also, I have the albano weight here in my hands. So <laughs> if you hear me shuffling cards, that's what it is. Um, so I kind of have an idea of what this person was getting at when they wanted me to answer that question. Um, so basically, connecting with guides, spirit in general, um, my higher self or my intuition or all of the above um, is nothing but just a lot of trust and that has been probably the biggest um the biggest thing that i have learned throughout my entire spiritual journey that i have started about five to six years ago so when i first started out and i was you know observing other mediums and readers connecting to spirit or past loved ones or whoever whatever I was always in the mindset that they were like having these crazy physical, um, literally like physical experiences. And I have since found as I have worked amongst many different types of readers, um, tarot, mediums, um, the rune readers, like I mean, the palm readers, I have found that majority are not connecting with a physical like having a physical physical like actually you could actually hear touch them um experience okay so that had to get that first i had to get that out of the way is if you are thinking that when you are connecting with spirit or i'm just gonna say spirit in general but you guys know what i mean like your intuition everything all of that if you guys are thinking that it's a physical experience. It's not um, uh, to an extent. Okay. Um, now, the other thing that I had to get out of my head was um, I, I assumed also that these people were experiencing um, actual like seeing them. So when I say physical, I'm also I also mean that too. Like with their own two eyes, they are seeing spirit as if I was standing right in front of them. Okay. And that's not the case. Now, some readers do, okay, I, and I do believe that. Some readers do, but the majority of us, myself included, are experiencing these spirit connections on a more emotional, um, mental level, okay? And by that I mean emotionally connecting with spirit is you sense them, you feel them, 
you can feel their energy. You can feel your emotions kind of mimicking the emotions that the spirit wants you to feel. So when I connect with spirit guides or spirit in general, um, that's my experience. Um, I mostly experience emotional connection um, as well as I'm starting more now more to it's okay. So for me, it's like to me, I feel like it's a blend of the two in my mind's eye and my mind's ear. So by that, I mean, it's all in my mind, but it's through my, like I hear it, but it's in my mind. I'm hearing it. Does that make sense? You guys, it probably doesn't. And this whole video is probably going to be confusing and I apologize, but <laughs> I don't know how else to explain this. Um, but in my mind's eye, my mind's ear, I hear spirit. Okay. So sometimes when I'm really in the zone where, whether I am meditating or I am doing a reading for a client, sometimes in my mind's ear or mind's eye, I will hear or see something from spirit, whether it is spirit themselves coming forward or it is a word or a feeling. Um, it just comes through. Now, I always tell my clients and, and anyone who asks this question, what is the experience like? It is, or, or like, how do you know when spirit is contacting you? Or how do you know when your intuition, it's your intuition or your ego? And my, my answer has always been, if it is your intuition or spirit, it is a thought feeling or something you hear that was not controlled by you. So if it was a random thought, a random image, a random feeling that you know you didn't control yourself, because we can tell ourselves to think about something and then we'll think about it. But if it just pops into your head randomly, that is your intuition, that is spirit. Bottom line, I, I'm sure people will argue this. Um, we all have our own ways of validating our connection with spirit, but at least I know from my own personal um, experiences, that is how I experience it and that is how I identify it. So anything that is coming to you that is out of your control, that you are not physically or intentionally trying to think is spirit, is your intuition, okay? And this stuff will happen fast. So <laughs> if you're not used to doing that and connecting and doing readings like that, it'll happen so fast sometimes you won't even get it, okay? Um, so think of it as like you're like someone's talking a mile a minute and you're trying to like write down all of the notes of what they're saying verbatim, word for word. Most of the time you're not going to be able to do that. You're going to get bits and pieces. And that is exactly what it's like when you're receiving message or when you are getting a download or when you are tapping into your intuition and you're getting, you know, something from thin air, okay, is nine times out of 10, you're not going to get the entire full blown sentence, you're going to get one or two words. And that is why when we are, you know, doing readings, why some of us, myself included, our tarot readers, we pull cards to kind of confirm that to get more information. Or if you're a medium, you'll see that they write in their notes and stuff. So some mediums are writing notes or some mediums are just kind of like um, bulleting, like a bullet journal, what they're trying to understand. <laughs> um, I don't feel like I'm there yet. I feel like um, I have had my experiences with mediumship and I have definitely um, relayed messages to clients as they come. Some spirits are stronger than others when they come through. Um, and sometimes it's me, like I'm just not connected as strongly as I am at one point. So it just depends. Um, it comes with practice. If you are practicing your readings, you will get better. Um, and I can say that out of experience with being a tarot reader, when I was first learning the tarot, I was nervous. I was always afraid of getting it wrong. <laughs> I was more focused on my accuracy than I was actually giving the message or giving the reading. So I have found that as I've, you know, evolved with my readings, I don't care about accuracy anymore. I care about getting the, the message across. And I will always relay to my clients that if something doesn't resonate or it doesn't make sense right now as you are receiving your reading, nine times out of 10, if you take notes on your reading or you save the video <clears throat> and then you 
just so happen to rewatch it, you know, months later or years later. I've had clients come back to me a year later telling me everything that I've mentioned in their reading has started to evolve. So sometimes I'm maybe gathering messages from spirit that are like not meant to happen until another year down the line. And sometimes my messages from spirit are simply from the past. So it just depends. It just depends. Um, I am a true believer that when we are receiving messages from spirit that we can't control what we want to hear from them. Um, I feel like when your guides want to tell you something, it's going to be what they feel like you need to know at this time. Okay. So for example, I've had, um, client readings where a client will have a very specific question that they want to ask their spirit guides. And in the reading, that specific question may be answered or it's somewhat overlooked because spirit is giving me something else to tell them. <laughs> so it may look like I'm not answering your question or I'm like completely ignoring your reading or I'm totally like off point, but spirit will have something else that they want you to know. So I have also found that that's what happens too. And it's kind of interesting because I've had so many clients who will go and say like, they didn't hear, they didn't get what they wanted to hear, but they got what they needed to hear. So it's, it's kind of like one of those things too. It's like, we can't pick and choose what we want to receive from spirit. Sometimes it's like, you just, it's better to just be, go into your reading, being open-minded and open heart to receive what it is that you need to hear in that moment. If that makes sense. <laughs> um, what else? So how do I connect with spirit? Um, when I connect with spirit, I started off with meditation. So I will always say, meditate, you guys. Meditate. Meditating, learn how to quiet your mind. I'm sorry, I got to drink water when I talk because I get all thirsty. Um, learn how to quiet your mind. Learn how to just stop all the mind chatter, you know? You know, and the mind chatter is when your thoughts are like going a million miles an hour and you're just thinking about everything. You're thinking about tomorrow. You're thinking about what you got to do after this video. You're thinking about what you want to eat. You're thinking about that person that pissed you off earlier today. Like <laughs> your mind is everywhere, right? But when you're meditating, it is a time for you to learn to shut it all off and you become, literally, you become centered with yourself. And your mind will wander, you guys. Like when you're meditating, sometimes you're on another planet. Sometimes you are in a just a, a dark black room, nothing, no one around you. Sometimes you are face to face with spirit. Sometimes you are face to face with yourself. Okay. Sometimes you're just not anywhere. You're just in silence, but maybe you're feeling stuff. So some people, when they meditate, they'll feel things or some people will see colors or some people will see actual like symbols or some people will see spirit. I mean like, and, and every meditation journey will be different. So my first tip for you guys is when you want to connect with your guides or your higher self or your, or your intuition, meditate, meditate and start off like if you're brand new with meditating start off five minutes you don't have to do this whole like beautiful ritual of a meditation for like an hour please don't do that <laughs> because it's it's I don't even meditate for an hour sometimes it's hard sometimes I can't get beyond 10 minutes so like meditate but it doesn't matter how long what matters is that you are in full-blown silence you are in peace mode you are on another level your vibration rises when you are meditating my next tip is get some crystals so the crystals are objects to help us crystals are like just like anything like it, it just kind of gives you it, it adds to that experience so crystals are really great I always recommend labradorite I don't have any on my table at the moment at least I don't think I do <coughs> Usually I have a Labradorite, but I don't have him right here. He's probably on my bedside table. But I always recommend Labradorite for meditation. Um, if not, I also recommend Amethyst. So this doesn't really look purple right now because of the orange. <laughs> but it's Amethyst. Amethyst is a purple crystal. This is Amethyst as well. 
um, that is known for its properties of peace um, and connecting to your third eye. So your third eye chakra, you can place a crystal over your forehead as you are meditating. You can hold it in your hand. You could place it on your chest. You could place it on your belly, wherever you feel like you want to do that. Um, but I feel like a crystal kind of like helps it. It's, it's, it let, call it the placebo effect. I don't care, but I feel like crystals just enhance the experience. Okay. So if you're setting the intention that your crystal is helping you with whatever it will, like it, it's all what it is. Okay. Um, my third tip would be to have a notepad or a journal nearby. So if you are one of those people where you heavily dream, um, start writing down your dreams as you remember them when you wake up. Chances are because you are going to set intentions of wanting to remember your dreams and writing down notes, you will have more dreams that you will remember as you write down more notes. So it's just all by like the power of all of that. It's, it's literally you're manifesting this in yourself. <clears throat> and same thing goes when you're meditating. If you're having this amazing experience when you meditate, as soon as you come out of meditation, write down what you experienced, okay? Or during meditation, if you're just sit sitting there, maybe you're automatic writing, which is a form of meditation. Write, you know, and whatever comes through, sometimes spirit will come through while you're writing. <laughs> um, the other tip I have is like, like if you're into cards, trusting that your card readings are a extension of spirit connecting with you through a physical tool, okay? So as you pull cards, set that intention. I want to connect with my guide. Like, therefore, the cards that I pull in this, in this reading are all messages from my guide. That is exactly what I do in my spirit guide readings, by the way, because I have enough trust and my intuition and what I'm receiving, as well as in my cards, I mean, as a tarot reader, you should be trusting your cards, um, that whatever comes through is a message for my client through the cards. So um, set that intention, okay? And eventually, you're going to get to the point where you won't even need the cards anymore. Like, you could literally sit there and start channeling your messages. I could do that now, but I like doing the cards because... This is the whole way I got into this path was my cards. So I feel like my cards will always be a part of what I do, but I feel like I have evolved enough in, in the last maybe two years where <clears throat> I feel like I could sit down with a client and actually give them an intuitive reading without cards and it will be just as spot on as it is with my cards because it's all me trusting my intuition but I like the cards, so <laughs> I think that'll always be a part of my path. Um, what else can I say for you guys? It's basically just start trusting yourself. Trust is the key. Trust is the biggest thing. If you are doubting constantly your messages through your cards and your messages of what you're feeling or seeing or hearing, you're going to always doubt. I mean, doubt is going to put that energy into your reading of it's a negative energy. It's a low vibrational energy and you're not going to be getting what you should be getting because you're blocking it with that doubt. So start learning to trust yourself. Start learning to trust your intuition and what you're feeling and experiencing. And I'm telling you, it'll happen more often. So it's the same thing. Like when you trust your intuition more and you start making your choices and your decisions of what you want to do for throughout your day, based on what your intuition is telling you, you'll start having more of these synchronistic experiences. Um, what else can I talk about? I just feel like, um, I just feel like when we're connecting with spirit, it's, it's precious. It is. A, it's a very intimate um, connection. It's a very intimate feeling. And it is a lot of trusting. It's a lot of just trusting yourself, you know. Um, like I said, just any thought, feeling, or image that comes to you that is just out of your control that you weren't intentionally trying to think about is a message, if that makes sense. <laughs> I hope that that makes sense because I feel like sometimes, you know, sometimes this stuff doesn't make sense. But um, I guess that's like the best way that I can describe this. I hope that this answered 
my client's question, <laughs> my follower's question. Um, I, I feel like there's so much more I could talk about on this topic, but I don't want the video to go on too long. So if you guys have any questions or any specific questions or anything that you anything that you specifically would like to see me do a video about I would love to hear your input so leave a comment below or you could send me an email all of that information is in the the description box I would love to hear from you and if I could provide a video some sort of tutorial some sort of explanation <laughs> for you um I would love to do that for you so hit me up let me know what you want to hear let me know what you think about this video, like what I said. Like I said, my way of connecting with spirit may be different. Um, my beliefs might be different than yours um, or someone else's. But everybody has the right to approach their path and their, their connection with spirit and energy in their own way. And um, that's just the way I do it. So <laughs> um, I, I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say. Thank you guys for tuning in. And I will talk to you soon. Bye, my loves.